Hello and welcome to the 10th episode of Queuing for Steam. Um, I might sound a little different today because I'm actually using a different mic just to see if there's a different, um, a better quality in audio uh, for my voiceover. But let's, that aside, let's just start the queue then, shall we? Let's see what's coming up. Ah, oh, Valiant Hearts the Great War. I'm not going to read the French title because I'll butcher that quite badly. Valiant Hearts the Great War is a story of four crossed destinies and a broken love in a world torn apart. Dive into the 2D animated comic book adventure, m mixing exploration, action, and puzzles. Lost in the middle of the trenches, players, each of four strangers, relive the war and help a young German find the rest of the description for this game. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it basically said it's a 2D comic book adventure, you can see that. Yeah, overwhelmingly positive, 96% of 6,800 reviews. Um, I've seen this played out, and I've actually watched a full playthrough of it, and it, it is, it it's really is a quite a nice, char charming, yeah, comic book style game. It's basically a sort of pl puzzle platformer, in a way. Everything's on a 2D plane, you walk along and scroll, side-scrolling, and then you have to solve puzzles and stuff like that. And it's, it's, yeah, it's got this really nice um, aesthetic to it, and it's, you know, it, it's a really interesting, nice story, and it, 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 it's partially also a... Um, what do you call it? A, a bit of an educational game. It teaches. Uh, there's all kinds of things about about World War One and amazing facts, facts and stuff. Um, it's it's rather informative, if if uh, nothing else. And yeah, the only downside is it's connected with UPlay, Ubisoft's actual own front end version of Steam, essentially, and it's not really that great having to run another launcher on top of this one. Um, but I would wholeheartedly recommend it. It's at f normally $15, it's currently on sale. I... It, it doesn't really have a lot of replayability though, other than I guess going back through it to get any collectibles you missed. Um, though if you just explore or actually are aware of the surroundings, you can actually pick them up rather easily. It has yeah, virtually no replayability, but it's 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 a really nice, charming uh, playthrough. Uh, I especially would recommend it on sale if you've already watched someone do a playthrough of it, as I have pretty much. Um, yeah, I I do recommend it. It's it's really uh, eye-opening and it's rather amazing story and a gameplay narrative. Yeah. All right. Next, F1 2014. Feel the power of turbocharged Formula One cars and the most successful Formula One video game yet. Features all cars, drivers, and circuits of the 2014 FIA Formula One World Championship. Mostly positive, 75% of 600 reviews. I am not a very, and I've said this before in a previous episode. I do don't like racing simulators. Arcade races, yeah, sure, but racing simulators, no, thank you. It's it's so annoying to not be able to take a turn at high speed and you spin out, slam into a wall, and you wreck to the entire race. That's that's bullshit, in my opinion. <laughs> um, there's some negative reviews. All right, uh, taking Well, that's quite uh, informative. Career modes, absolutely no severe updates. Pick your nerve number. Okay, there's not really much of a game in the, as in story, but that that's basically the thing. Then you get stuff like what was the Tokyo Touring Car Championship? Where there was actually a big storyline going on, even though it was just the usual not a nonsensical thing. Um, it's very pretty if the, any of these are actually in game and not bull shots. Uh, I think they probably more likely are bull shots. There's no HUD to speak of. 
the pre-rendered in-game shots. I, I I've said this just now. Um, it is usually fifty dollars, but it is currently on sale, and it's that's a pretty good discount for it. But I mean, it only applies to people who, who are into um, racing simulators and it's more and more the more realistic racer ga racing games. I'm afraid I can't recommend. Dead Island Riptide. They thought they had escaped from Benoit, but can't wake up from the nightmare. That is an incredibly small description. And but I mean, if you haven't heard or if you don't know about the original Dead Island Riptide, then you have no interest in this. Basically, it's you could say it's Dead Island 1.25, whereas um, Dying Light is more like Dead Island um, 1.5 or 1.75 it's a little bit better but it's essentially the same game this one is just basically it, it's it's a big DLC you could just say it's such a big DLC they have to sell it in its own standalone thing um, it's the usual first person um, hack and slash zombie, s zombie action game I wouldn't call it survival because it's not you don't really survive you just hack them up in a gory manner and stuff like that um, yeah, it has an open world. This one in its very positive reviews, 86% of 5,500 reviews. It's not a whole lot. Um, it is currently on sale. It's usually 20, but it's yeah, it's a good discount off. Um, I I own the original Dead Island. I think I've mentioned that before, and it was a fun game, but. I don't know if this is really worth it. And then there's the other two small DLC, just um, uh, cosmetic stuff, I think, and maybe extra weapon pack and stuff. Uh, those are not really great. I. Yeah, there's a new playable character, a hand to hand fighter, who's based on a certain Fist of the North style mod. Uh, it goes a bit crazy. Um, yeah, boats, but that isn't really worth it. Multiplayer, meh. I actually played through the original as single player. It's 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 all right for that. It, it really is a lot more fun in multiplayer, but uh, I uh, I don't know. I can't really recommend it. it. It's not unless you're really interested in the Dead Island story, of which I I am not. It it, it was bland and meh at best. Um, I, g I can't really recommend it. Although if you you're really b dying for more Dead Island action, and you're really not wanting to drop money on um, Dying Light, I guess this when it's on really hefty sale is is a good idea. Maybe. Pillars of Eternity. <laughs> oh wow, pre-order bonuses. It's a pre-order. Yeah, pre-order game. Uh, prepare to be enchanted by a world where the choices you make in the past you, you choose shape your destiny. Obsidian Entertainment, developer Fallout New Vegas, South Park Stick of Truth, together with Paradox Interactive, is proud to present Pillars of Eternity. It is a, uh, the traditional CRPG, computer RPG, isometric style um, game in the vein of Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, of those kinds. Um, yeah, to 3D render, unless it is actually 3D, but I think it's 3D rendered 2D backgrounds, I think, though, really, is what it is. Um, well, you have 3D character models walking around on top of it. Um, what was it? Divinity Original Sin is also kind of similar, although that might be full 3D from what I remember. Just also set in the same isometric view. Um, Wow, there is a lot of different versions of this game. Oh, and there's two. There's an upgrade. There's two different upgrades in case you want to upgrade your regular edition or hero edition, which I assume is the regular version. And there's champion and royal, whatever those really do. Um, yeah, like I said, pre-order bonuses. All right, so the base version. Giant miniature space piglet. <laughs> All right, go on to pledge. Um, yeah, I guess those are the two pr 
free order bonuses for the Heroes Edition. Championship, you get the uh, soundtrack, a digital campaign almanac, uh, high res game map, making of documentary, wallpapers and ringtones, blah blah blah. The Royal Edition gets all the stuff from Champion and including the wallpapers, also gets ringtones, soundtrack, n a novella by Chris Avalone, uh, digital collector's PDF. High res concept art and a digital strategy guide. Mm, that might be alright. But considering the price difference, base version being $45, well, the next one being $60, which, yeah. And then, the, other, and then uh, the last one being $90. Uh, so. I guess. No, I, I, I guess those extras are worth it? I don't know. I yeah. I mean, I, I've tried to play CRPGs in, in the past, and they are kind of interesting. But I just I can never really get into them. Maybe it's because of the isometric style. I mean, I I tried, and I think I've mentioned this, to play the original Fallout games, and I think that might have been more so due to the clunky uh, UI and lack of. Um, A lack of was it now no 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 not adventure but a lack of just uh, direction really it's it just dump here into an open world and it's like go forth and that like is is kind of a bit daunting at first and I think that's what why why I never got over that hump of just getting into Fallout um, yeah I. I mean, it looks nice, but there's virtually, virtually no actual in-game here. Even though that that is virtually what the game will look like. There's there, there's no HUD and stuff, and it, it it it's all turn-based. on from what I remember of the old CRPGs. Mm. I mean, it looks good, but I think I will want to wait on it, and I probably and uh, yeah. Another one I did actually try to play was Arcanum of Magic and Technology Obscura. That one was rather engaging, but I, I never really picked it up. Maybe I should actually try and get back into it. Mm, maybe this one might help. I don't know. I'll just I'll wait till it, it comes out and see how it does. L A cops, although La cops, La cops, because. You haven't put a significant space between your <laughs> LA and cops, except for the actual title. Uh, LA Cops is a fast action past 3D top down shooter set to the theme of 70s cops in LA trying to do a tough job in a tough town. Positive, with 86% of 44 reviews. Uh, it's only just recently come out. It has an interesting kind of. Yeah. Oh, it's an is it's isometric gameplay. Um, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, I guess. I ain't, uh, I'm not really entirely sure what you can compare this to. I mean, it's got a nice cel shaded kind of like look to it. It's very yeah, and then the whole overall seventies vibe with the fuzz, mustaches, multiple characters and stuff. <laughs> oh god, that reminds me of Indy 76 so bad. Oh, they need more car combat driving games like that. I wish there, there were more. Um, yeah, isometric, I guess. Um, there's a prog progression map of the world, I guess, in the way you could call it. Yeah, it, oh, it reminds me of Commandos. Behind enemy lines, the original versions. I although I don't know whether or not you can actually turn the overall map because looking at it, if this is gameplay, that's yeah. Can you rotate the map? Can you? It looks like you can actually tilt it slightly, unless that's the it's uh, moved. 
it it does yeah it that's yeah a kind of tactical isometric um, police in stealth game in a way. It sounds it looks rather interesting. Um, eighty six percent. It's all right looking or all right sounding from what user reviews. It's currently on sale though. It's usually fifteen dollars. That's not that much actually. But how big is the game? For that. Hmm. Obviously difficult all around, takes it hard to kill and have better aim at later levels, so should be straight aspect of the game, okay. Mm, so there's a serious ramp in difficulty. And um, it's normal is extremely easy. Okay, so there's inconsistencies in difficulty. No difficulty thing may be called hope it doesn't present much of a challenge, nightmare is extremely difficult. Okay, so there's a vast difference in difficulty settings, yeah. Hmm. There's too many good reviews and all the bad ones. No, it's tricked into buying it. Oh. Very boring, okay. It's only 9 hours long, okay, so that's. Yeah, maybe it's alright for 15 bucks. But. Yeah, that's a start skiing, hunch, take a hot by Miami. It looked like I had an interesting goal kind of thing to it. It was in early access, I think I really do remember seeing it pop up before, so it's out of early access, but I'm telling you it's all sabotage, yeah, funny. Um Yeah, but it's not really Hotline Miami. At least from what I'm guessing. How does the actual gameplay look? Let's see. Excuse me. Jump, jump ahead, come on, get to the next gameplay section. Uh huh. Okay, so it kind of, yeah, maybe it is a bit more run and gun than actually commandos, which is more tactical. Um. Well, it could be interesting, but like I said, yeah, maybe there's inconsistencies. I think. I think maybe I'll wait till it's on a higher sale, wait until it drops below 10. Goes in the single figures, yeah, maybe. Uh, let me try later. Okay, Counter Strike Condition Zero. <coughs> With this extensive tour of duty campaign, a near limitless number of skirmish modes, updates, and new content for Counter Strike's award winning multiplayer gameplay, plus over 12 bonus multi. Oh, single player missions. Counter Strike Condition Zero is a tremendous offering of single and multiplayer something or other. I don't know what the rest of it will say. Very positive. 91% of 3,800 reviews. Uh, yeah, a single player version of Counter Strike, and this is the old version before Source as well. It's the old Half Life 1 engine. Um. It's relatively cheap, and oh, it actually requires the original Counter Strike as well. Um, though the bundle of ver anthology version is cheaper because it's on it's on sale or it's discounted at least. Um, and then Counter Strike Complete, which includes the source as well. But yeah, you don't really need Day of Defeat or Deathmatch. Classic and Ricochet, that, those are rather, yeah. Uh, and then if, if you're buying this, why would you even bother when it uh, was an, uh, globally offensive? Is that? Um, so, I, I don't know. Pre release, jeez, that's quite old. Posted? How did it pre release when it's. Uh, because, yeah, Condition Zero is ancient, 2004. 
how can you have a pre-release review in 2014? That doesn't make any sense. Um, I don't know. I've never really tried it. I mean, I've I've, I've played uh, Conditions Zero since the first beta. Uh, oh no, no, not Conditions Zero. Counter Strike. Excuse me. And uh, I don't know. It, it is very positive, and I guess if you want to walk down memory lane and see what Counter Strike could have been like if it was Rainbow Six in a way, um, but I I don't know. It's just such a weird thing to pop up. I don't think this was even developed by Valve or... Oh no, no, it was. But I thought it was outsourced to someone else. Hmm, I don't know. I don't really think so. I mean, possibly... If... You, if, if I, can, no, I can't really even see why you would buy this. No, I wouldn't recommend it. Realm of the Mad God, which is free to play actually. Team up with dozens of players and battle through the realm of the Mad God, Oryx. With a retro 8-bit style realm. No, realm is a evolution of additional MMO gameplay. Oh, a realm of the Mad God is an evolution. Okay, I don't know why they left out the Mad God part there. Um, 81%, very positive of... 13,800 reviews. Uh, I've played a bit of um, uh, Realm of Mad God, and it, it, it's kind of cool for like a, a basic little like open world romp. Uh, like, I mean, it has um, very very basic uh, RPG styling to it. Um, the top down slash isometric view is interesting. Um, in that regard, it's although it's yeah the massive multi multiplayer where places get crowded with player characters. Oh god, um, I don't know. It I mean it, it, it's good to, to try, and then there's um, yeah there, there are DLC and booster packs within it. Um, oh, completely negative reviews have boiled to the top. Why is that? When it's mostly positive, it's very positive. Uh, when it was on Congregate, yeah, there's a rather old type of game. It's a bullet hell style gameplay, yeah. Uh, free to play model? No one ever wants free to play. Yeah, but I don't get why, why you're hating it, because there isn't any um, PvP in it, I th believe. It's only just um, a PvE. I don't get why people are dissing it. It's it's cool as a free little romp, and uh, basically you you purchase some. Um, it's either skins or character unlocks or extra character slots. Basically, um, there's not really much much in the way of free to play or pay to win type um, like things. The booster pack, which gives you what for dungeons to kickstart your adventure. Okay, so you can also purchase adventures and dungeons. Mm. Well, I believe the overworld is quite expansive, so... and it does get rather challenging at times, but... I, I, I don't know why people would complain about the free game, and it's 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 a fun thing. Um, yeah, I would recommend it, because, I mean, it's there's no cost to it, really. If you don't want to pay for it, you don't have to. Payday the Heist, uh, the first game. Take on the role of a hardened career criminal, executing intense, dynamic heists in constant pursuit of the next big score. Very positive. 94% of 24,000 reviews. Um, I own Payday, obviously, and like the first or second game, I enjoyed it quite a bit when I played it. Jeez, these <laughs> graphics, though, they look kind of a bit dodgy. Although, I wonder, it doesn't even look... Is that from the beta or something? Because I don't remember it even looking like that. But like I've said, it has been a, a while since I've played it. Man. Um, it's it's quite fun, but I must say yeah, Payday 2 basically does this, everything this does, but better. Um, you have very l real reason, really, to buy this over Payday 2. Though... 
it is it's rather cheap at the moment, especially with the the there's a special promotional sale going on for the uh, the train uh, the, the hype train event and the s uh, summer or oh, spring break event as well. Um, but with the normal price it usually is is fifteen dollars, which isn't too bad. Um, then there's also his DLC. The, uh, the DLCs are, are very good, I must say. The Wolfpack one, especially with the two extra heists and extra class and guns. Um, that's that's well worth it, I'd, uh, I'd say. Especially that it's uh, the, the heavy heavy sale that it's on. I I will recommend it as such because it is it's a very good game. But generally, if you're looking between this and its sequel, I would definitely say go for the sequel. It's a bigger expanded game, even even without the DLC. It's generally a lot bigger, and it's well, uh, it offers more in a way. Um, but yeah, this is still quite a nice game. Age of Mythology Extended Edition. Age of Mythology is back. Choose your god and take to the battlefield in this classic, upgraded with full Steamworks integration, enhanced features. Very positive of 2,800 reviews. 82%. Um, I've played the original version of Age of Mythology a little bit, but uh, and it was it was a very interesting like 3D Age of Vampires, but with mi uh, mi the mythos of Greek, Norse, and Egyptian type of civilizations, and uh, and I mean th they were quite quite in it was quite interesting, but it really doesn't go much further than that. I, I mean, uh, there is single player, but from what I can remember, it was rather meh. A single player. Um, there was a negative review here. Age of Mythology is a good game, so I and I regret it. Problem messed up badly multiplayer network. Yeah, multiplayer is pretty much borked. Uh, even played in the land of lag. Okay, it's terrible lag. Tend to play campaign, single play high score. Sure, go ahead and enjoy. However, mm, okay, there's no working multiplayer, so you might as well just get it for single player only and skirmishes, which I dare say is not really the really great thing about this game. Um, I would recommend not getting this. So yeah, if if you also if you don't own the original Age of Mythology, maybe then it it. it to take a look at it to see if it's any if if you really, li really like the this type of RTS, um, it's not on sale. It is thirty dollars, so I don't think I would even purchase it for that. Probably only if it's on sale, lowering down into teens or single figures, um, especially because the, the multiplayer section is rather apparently not working. Um, and I don't know if they're really going to do anything to try and fix it or improve it. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. When were those reviews from? October to last year. Okay. And well, if they hadn't fixed it by then, because it came out in May, I don't think they're ever going to fix the multiplayer. Yep. If it's November. Uh, play the multiplayer, which is the worst I've ever seen. Yeah, okay, if they haven't fixed the multiplayer by now, it's never going to get fixed unless you find like patches online. And I don't think that will really fix it either, because if it goes through Steamworks, it's generally going to be just it's just not going to work ever. Um, yeah. I Buy it for single player only when it's on heavy discount. That's all I can re recommend it as. Okay, X Rebirth, which is free at the moment. Mostly negative though. Um, in the distant future, the X universe faces a period of profound and irrevocable change. While the universe stumbles towards an uncertain future, countless adventures await as new enemies rise in search of power. 29% of 4,400 reviews. Ouch. Negative. Um, 
Well, I mean, this looks nice, but that's all bullshit because where's the actual in-game? Let's see, gameplay maybe. Gameplay, gameplay. I, I don't know. Um, X. Now I don't know much about X because I always get mixed up between the uh, X and XCOM, and uh, there was a two different games apparently. X Rebirth represents uh, X series. What is the X series? Is it? Oh, it's basically just a um, elite c uh, kind of thing. You fly a spacecraft around, you trade, go to stations, and fight people and crap. It's in that same kind of uh, category, I'm guessing. Um, no, it isn't free to play. Oh, it's because it's it's a free free weekend, so. It's going to disappear quite soon. Um, it is usually forty dollars, but it is on sale f for the next couple of hours. Um, I'm not entirely sure, especially when this, the whole community is basically lashing up against it. Um, that's interesting. If it's most negative, why is there? Positive reviews boiling to the top. Uh, to bug and features again feels like some kind of with some rights. Now playable. Okay, so it wasn't playable on launch. Ooh. Um, I've gotten the game breaking of bugs, and it crashes uh, and related game version uh, the good parts. Okay, disappointing. Uh, lack of automation available player X X games. Oh, okay, so you have to micromanage everything even annoying things possibly um, earning cash as a whole seems to be backwards in this game okay what would improve it's better AI, better ship designs less congested menus, okay trading seems to go to pricing slider solves this issue Fleet management and supply. Uh, oh yeah, because you can own and build up a fleet as well. Because you're like a business almost, almost in a way. Uh, bounce of drones, ammo. Why should they deploy more? Blah blah blah. Find any game bugs. First probably one ship probably yada yada yada. Um I'm not too sure. Especially when there's such a negative connotation behind it. And then um what is the C E version? What does that mean? Okay, you don't tell me what oh collector's edition. Oh race it comes with an outpost, a soundtrack, a second soundtrack. Um, download X Space Opera, like a music video for some <laughs> reason. Bonus download with artworks and X Encyclopedia. Okay, there's an encyclopedia and an art book. Mm, collector's edition, I'm not too sure. Um, that's the one that comes with this expansion bundle. And then there's the other games, which I don't know if the other games are really the any better. I. And it is getting patched, but. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'll have to actually. I'll actually have to hear if someone else has played it and see if they recommend it or not. Um, probably. I probably. Uh, I'll sit against this because generally that. negative reviews or something. Shell Shock Live Early Access. Demolish your friends with hundreds of upgradable weapons shot from your customizable tank in this extra-packed online multiplayer tank scheme. Mm. Earn XP to level up and unlock new tanks, weapons, and gear. Fight against along or alongside your friends for strategic team or free-for-all matches. All right, it looks like worms with tanks essentially. Um, yeah, this destructible two uh, D environment. It's got an interesting minimalistic space aesthetic in a way. Uh, yeah, you can customize the tank. However, really that works, or if that does really anything. Um, 
I mean, it, it looks interesting. That's the way they're not. Okay, there's a progression system as well. And unlocks. Uh, let's see what a visual it looks like when played. Okay. Yeah, it's. Wow, it, it's basically just worms with. A, oh, okay, yeah, 80 weapons. Jeez. It's quite an extensive thing, but. Uh, it really just looks like worms, essentially. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks kind of nice, but as if <laughs> I mean, is there a single? Oh, there is a single player to it as well, which is probably just a bunch of challenges mostly. Um, yeah, it it just looks like worms with tanks in a Tron-esque like thing. And then, oh gosh, this must have been on an iPad or... It, it, it's a mobile game of some kind. Look at the size of those uh, weapon, uh, the buttons. Uh, it, it must be, it's just probably a port of an uh, iPad or... <sighs> or it's the yeah, arts thing. Oh, okay, Flash. Yeah, there's Flash versions of the game. I don't know. I can't even recommend it, even if it is, even if it comes out of out of early access. It just, if it does anything different to what Worms does, maybe, but I can't, I can't really say I, I can recommend this at all. No, um, it's fifteen dollars. Uh, if it was less, maybe yeah, but otherwise, I don't really know if there's anything else I can do. Dead or Alive 5, last round. The final word in the fighting tournament, Dead or Alive 5, last round. It is a pre-order. It's not out yet. Um, I enjoy fighting games. I have never actually played any of the Dead or Alive series. The uh, last fighting game I've kind of played a little bit was... Uh, I, I took over for my brother when uh, he was playing was that Street Fighter 4 one time. And then since then, the only time I've ever really actively played a proper fighting game is back in the Mega Drive um, with Mortal Kombat 3 and uh, yeah, Mortal Kombat 3 Ultimate. Those are virtually the only times I've ever really actively played a, co a fighting game properly. Um, this is obviously the Dead Alive series, which I've heard is it, it's a ver it's actually a really decent fighting game. The um, 3D uh, circular arena type of fighting game where you punch people through different environments and you have a, a changing arena. I don't know if that applies to this. It might do actually, looking at some of these. It possibly does, yeah. Um, but it isn't out yet and it's. Uh, usually it is. It will be $40 normally. But it's currently on discount, and I don't think there's any pre-order bonuses. Okay, there are some uh, costumes, ninja costumes, bikini costumes, <laughs> uh, more bikini costumes. Oh, for fuck's sakes! Yeah, um, and that's the other thing that it boils down to is if you can get past the uh, somewhat sexualization of the female characters, especially from the volleyball series, oh god. Um, yeah, it's from what I heard, it's a fairly decent fighting game. I, although I don't know if 5 is going to be any worse or better than the previous ones. Um, I also didn't the... what was that Tekken that had a, a side-scrolling uh, beat-em-up style game with a single player? Was it one of the Dead or Alive games? The last one, 4 or something? Oh, I can't remember. I think it was Tekken, actually, in second form. But, um... Yeah, it might be good. It might be bad. I don't know. I can't really recommend it at the moment because it's still pre-order. And that concludes this episode of Queuing for Steam. I will come back to you with another new one and possibly review whether or not this new microphone sounds better. Okay, bye!